Hey everyone, I'm Ari Altman with the Tech Buyers Guru and I'm here to introduce four new coolers that I'll be testing on the AMD AM4 platform to show you what you can do if you'd like to push the limits of your Ryzen CPU. Back in uh, January 2017, I spoke with AMD reps at CES uh, two months before Ryzen was introduced and I asked them, well, what are you going to do about coolers if some of your products don't actually have a cooler in the box? Your, you know, the high performance 1800X and 1700X, 1600X didn't have coolers in the box. They said, well, we've got uh, plenty of partner uh, buy-in lined up. We've got Corsair on the liquid side and Noctua on the, on the air side. I said, well, that's great. Those are two great partners to line up for your launch. Uh, Corsair being the top selling uh, liquid cooler manufacturer in the world and then Noctua being really kind of the most well-regarded air cooler manufacturer. But when push came to shove and launch day arrived in early March, there were kind of a few problems. First of all, on the Corsair side, uh, Corsair's liquid coolers that were compatible with uh, AM4 were actually had kind of backwards compatibility or forwards compatibility, you might say, because they were designed for AM2. And their latest and greatest coolers didn't actually work with AM4, which was a big problem in my, uh, from my point of view. On the Noctua side, yes, they had AM4 specific coolers, but they were AM4 only, which meant you had to kind of pay a premium for a cooler that only had one bracket inside the box, and that was for AM4. If you're never going to update your system to another platform, that's okay, but if you're going to spend the money that you know Noctua coolers demand, well, you might want that interoperability. So neither of these solutions really struck me as perfect. Well, since then, about six months have passed, and a number of cooler uh, manufacturers have stepped up their game. Okay, we've got Arctic, we've got Riven, we've got uh, Cooler Master down here, and Thermal Take over here. All these have AM4 brackets in the box, and a number of them actually spelled out right on the front of the box with AM4 specific marketing, um, like Thermal Take right here with this big AM4 sticker. Look, AM4 and Ryzen took the market by storm. Uh, I don't think AMD uh, realized what a hit it was going to have on its hands, and certainly cooler manufacturers hadn't really bought in yet because they had kind of been burned with previous AMD platforms that did not perform. Well, Ryzen does perform, and people want to push the Ryzen CPUs to the limit, and that's what these coolers will allow you to do. So inside this box, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, move these coolers out of the way so you can see what we've got here. This is a Thermaltake View 31 case, and what I really like about this case is it has really limitless uh, radiator and cooler mounting options. This, this case just has tremendous headroom up here. It also has a lot of flexibility up on top. I'm going to show you exactly what, you can, what you're going to see here. This mesh comes right off the top, giving you direct access to those radiator mounts. It has mounts for just about any radiator you could ever imagine, and plenty of headroom um, and ability to offset that cooler so you don't bump into your motherboard. That's a big problem I'm finding in a lot of cases nowadays. They advertise 280 millimeter, or 240, 280 millimeter, 360 millimeter radiator compatibility, and yet you can't actually fit it up there if you've got a motherboard in the case. That's a big problem, and I have complained to a, a number of manufacturers about that with their cases, and I am hoping they'll be, become a little bit more honest about compatibility. Well, Thermaltake, I'm pretty sure, um, has tested all of this, and that's why I chose this case. Now, inside here uh, is a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, which is an 8-core CPU. By default, it runs pretty cool and quiet because its clock speed is rather conservative, but I'll be overclocking it to really push these coolers to the limit. And we'll also be using this Noctua, Noctua cooler as a baseline, a kind of a reference. This is an NHD15, their finest air cooler. Um, it was released as an AM4 only model earlier this year. And right now, I've removed one of the two fans because it actually does interfere with the RAM. That is one of the problems with big air coolers. Um, what I'm going to do uh, when testing is I'll put that second fan up front here, but um, I'm going to have to offset it way up high on the cooler to allow it to clear these tall LED lit uh, RAM heat sinks that are uh, installed in this system. I am not going to change the rules for NUC2. I'm going to stick with the RAM that I like in the system, and that RAM is this tall RGB lit um, or LED lit RAM. Um, so those are really the five coolers you're going to see in this roundup. We've got, uh, this is Arctic's Liquid Freezer 240, which has four fans in the box for a push-pull arrangement. I must say, Arctic, which is based in Switzerland, has taken efficient packaging to uh, the extreme. There's a 240 millimeter radiator and four fans in here. I actually did open this box already. There's no padding at all in there. They must uh, 
and not be worried about damage and shipping. We've also got uh, a newcomer, Reven, with their Naya 240. This is a brand new liquid cooler, and, and Reven's very first liquid cooler to hit the market. We've got Cooler Master with its uh, Master Liquid 240, which is aimed for compatible out of the box, and also takes the prize for being the least expensive cooler in this roundup. It's about $90. Uh, actually, similar in price to the Arctic. Sometimes it's less. Uh, the Reven is about 110, and down here we've got the most expensive cooler. This Thermal takes uh, a 280 millimeter water 3.0, which has its ring RGB fans, which are very, very nice looking. I know that because they're mounted in this case as well. It should look very nice, and it uh, might get some extra brownie points for matching the case. But don't worry, we're going to be looking uh, very closely at performance, and performance is going to win it all, winner take all. Um, one last thing I'm going to mention before cutting out to show you what's inside these boxes is that there will be a follow-up review of a lower cost air coolers. I have five liquid, uh, I have four liquid coolers on hand and I have about five or six air coolers on hand. Um, I'll pull down a few right now. As a matter of fact, they're, they're right over here. Um, we've got uh, great, great AM4 compatible coolers uh, from CryoRig with their H7 Quad Lumi. We've got Arctic's yet to be released Freezer 33 eSports Edition. Got several other coolers coming in from the likes of Scythe and Silverstone um, that are AM4 compatible. So that's going to be a follow-up article because these uh, these coolers are really in a different class. Okay, um, starting at about $35 and going up to $60 for the H7 Quad Lumi. Uh, they shouldn't be made to compete with liquid coolers in the $100 to $150 price bracket. So it's going to be a completely separate review because they're really a targeting a different audience. But I just want to let you know that yes, we'll be testing AM4 compatible coolers uh, in the lower price brackets as well. Don't worry. It's all going to be done right here in this in this Thermaltake case with a Ryzen 7 1700 processor. And okay, I'm going to cut out now and show you what's in the box just so we can take a quick look at these coolers before they get mounted in the system. Okay, catch you soon. All right, I'm back. I've unpackaged, uh, unboxed these coolers. I'm going to walk you through some of the features that differentiate these models. Uh, let's start with the Arctic cooler right here. Okay, it looks pretty traditional from the front, but look at that thick radiator. I think that's a 38 millimeter uh, thick radiator. I'll have to check the specs. Um, but uh, in short, that's going to be an extra thick radiator, much thicker than any of the other models you'll see here. Just for comparison's sake, uh, I'll hold up this Thermaltake cooler right here. You can see that it's a quite a bit thinner than the than the Arctic. And of course, Arctic includes four of its 120 millimeter fans. Yes, count them. Four were packaged in that tiny box there. And these are the very nice looking Arctic fans. Um, these might be the F12. It uh, doesn't say on here which model it is. The F12 is a very good model. Um, hopefully, it has uh, fluid dynamic bearings in there to keep it quiet. And then, of course, you've got uh, you've got the uh, mounting system here. Lots of bags. You've got a little packet packet of MX4 thermal compound. I don't love those packets. I like tubes a lot more in terms of application. But MX4 is pretty good stuff. Uh, since I already mentioned thermal tech, let's move over to this claim to fame. Here is this is a 280 millimeter radiator. You can see it's it's quite a bit bigger than the 240 millimeter radiators uh, that the other coolers use. Um, it's got a nice low profile uh, uh, cooler block at the end and I don't believe it has any RGB effects on it but don't, don't worry Thermaltake includes its ring RGB fans and in addition to of course your AM, AM4 mount there it is it says AM4 right there and we know that's included in the box you get the RGB controller this is a fan and lighting controller uh, fan speed and lighting controller for your two ring fans and these are these are really good looking fans and quite quiet to have used them before um, so that's what you get in the box with your uh, with your water 3.0 RGB then we've got the master liquid pro uh, from cooler master relatively uh, standard thickness 240 millimeter radiator very hefty cooling block I must say that's a pretty pretty tall cooling block uh, maybe that means it works quieter or more powerfully we'll see um, I think it has some RGB effects or maybe just a white LED, the uh, Cooler Master logo there might light up. I don't think this is a full RGB uh, kit. And then you've got uh, your mounting system, uh, lots of stuff in bags of course, and two of Cooler Master's kind of upgraded fans. These are pretty nice fans, they're called the Master Fan 120AB. They've got kind of cool translucent blades 
and a rubber uh, noise reduction pads on, on all sides here. So that's that's an upgraded fan. Uh, that's not your standard issue uh, Cooler Master, you know, case fan for three bucks. This these are nice fans that Cooler Master's included with this cooler. Finally, Reven. You all might not be that familiar with Reven. Reven's a, a, a new outfit. Um, I think it's based in Taiwan. And what they have here is a 240 millimeter radiator. Um, and then uh, they've got a really interesting cooling block here. It's got translucent plastic, and you can see that cooling coolant in there. And kind of to accentuate that uh, visibility, they include something crazy in the box. This is not something you'd see with any other all-in-one cooler. You've got uh, coloring, color, color that you can add to your coolant. And in fact, they even <laughs> include a bottle of additional coolant. This is a refillable cooler right here is the nozzle for it. Um, where you would put additional coolant as that, you know, kind of evaporates over time. And you can dye your, your liquid so you can see that flowing through there. So that's a different take on coloring. I don't know that this has any RGB effects, but you can have red, blue, or yellow coolant running through your system. Uh, so that is a really neat and um, unusual take on an all-in-one uh, cooler. Uh, the fans it comes with are two Reven, what look like relatively standard issue. These are probably not... Uh, fluid dynamic bearing fans. We'll see how they operate. Uh, fans like this are typically a little bit scratchy, particularly when mounted in a horizontal position uh, with, the, with the bearings not uh, in their ideal position. If these are sleeve bearing fans, they're made to rotate uh, uh, vertically. When placed like this, they can get a little scratchy, so we'll see. I don't know for a fact uh, that the others are fluid dynamic, but hopefully at least some of them are, because that is an advantage, particularly if, with the, uh, I think the Thermaltake fans are, right? these are much more expensive fans, so I think they'll be fluid dynamic. So that's what you get in the box, interesting takes uh, on all of them, your Arctic's got your thick radiator and four fans, Thermaltake's got your RGB fans, uh, that are 240 millimeter each, Reven's done something really thinking out of the box here with this colored uh, uh, coolant in there, which you usually only see in custom loops. And then, um, you know, Cooler Master, well, it's, it's more of a str straight away, you know, 240 millimeter cooler, traditional, but it's coming in a really nice price point. Um, so it would be really interesting to see how this competes because this is well under $100. Very, very unusual for a 240 millimeter cooler. So that's it for now. That's the unboxing video. Um, please remember to subscribe, uh, like if you enjoyed this video, um, and we'll continue to make more. And look for a full benchmark review article on the Tech Buyers. Guru website. It's going to be a written review because really uh, having all this data out there is a little bit easier to present on the page than it is on a video. So uh, I'll provide a link in, in the description when that is up. But uh, until then, stay tuned and uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.